of the Hot. This is David Charles Allen, Realtor at Village Properties in Santa Barbara, California. My great friend and co-host, Patty Teal. I'm doing great today, Patty. How are you doing? I'm doing well too, David. Thanks for asking. Good. Yeah, we actually had a little bit of rain last night. Looking ahead, we're going to see some scattered weather throughout the 50s and then potentially a couple more days of rains on the horizon. So it's really, really wonderful to see that. Yes, especially when you don't get rain too often, you can really appreciate it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And it's been happening for some years now, but it will say it gets, it's going to be like 50 to 90% chance of rain. And the closer you get to that day, it keeps going down and down and down, and then it doesn't rain at all. So it's right. very odd how that uh, seems to happen, at least for California. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you're getting some well-needed rain, but not too much. So no worry of floods, just a nice soft rain. Sounds beautiful. Yes, that always brings out great weather. And in terms of surf, we really haven't had a really good surf these last several weeks now. Um, there's been some, some micro swells out there and maybe some potential for some smaller swells on the horizon, but no real winter swells yet, which is, has been interesting. Right. Are they expecting some or how far in advance do you know when a swell is coming? I mean, it's it's kind of like the rain. You you think it's coming and you don't really know until it's right in front of you. So it's really hard to predict in that sense. Right. I know there are even surf websites where you can look and get the surf report. Do you utilize those or do you just run down to the beach and check it out? No, I mean, you use I use just look at the buoys and not necessarily websites, but just future buoy predictions and seeing if there's any storms coming. And that'll give you a realistic idea if there's going to be any waves or not. Well, I love to hear about surfing. And uh, I think it's too late for me in this lifetime to become a surfer. But (laughs) I have have stood up on a surfboard and ridden a wave. It's quite fun. It's never too late. Mm -hmm. (laughs) In terms of interest rates as well, doing a little back and forth again, they're up to 3.25 for conforming 30-year fixed and down to 2.875 for a jumbo 30-year. So again, going up slightly, going down slightly. And that's all we know at this point is they keep going up and they keep going down. So I don't remember it being down to 2.875 in a while, though. It's a good one that we're under three again, but that's for the jumbo loans. So that Mm -hmm. usually means depending where you're living. It really depends where you live because each county or state has a limit on the jumbo, non-jumbo space. And I think in California, or at least Santa Barbara, it just went up to like 620000 If your loan's under that, it would be a conforming. Anything over that and not is non-conforming. And what the difference is between the two is conforming is a little bit easier to qualify for. And jumbo is just a little more difficult to qualify for. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It's just they want more qualifications for each different space. Oh, but David, I should have asked you that a long time ago because you always report on those two numbers, but I really didn't know the difference. So thanks for explaining that. Yeah, it's just a number cut off for how much your loan amount is. And just depending on that, it's going to lead to needing either a higher quarter score, more income history, more stability with your income, like years experience or years work in the same field. So it just really depends. In terms of how the listings performed this last week, we had 36 new listings, 15 price changes, 36 that closed, 27 that went pending, four that expired, and eight that were coming soon. So not a huge number of new listings, but again, for the second straight week, we've had less pendings than new listings. And 15 price changes is a rather significant number as well. Yes, that's interesting. So they didn't sell, evidently. And they lowered the price. Would that account for pretty much all of those 15 listings? Yes, exactly. Some situations, something goes into escrow at a higher price point, then somehow falls out. It could be a price change up to get to that number they're in escrow at. But typically, it's people reducing the price. I see. It seems like sellers are becoming more realistic. A little bit of adjustment, it seems Mm -hmm. like. A little transition, but it could just be the holidays too, so... It's really hard to know for sure. So are you ready for our question of the week? Let's hear it. Someone wrote to us and said, sometimes you may meet a listing agent at an open house and they represent the seller. Is it all right for the buyer to use that same agent too, or do they need their own agent? It's really dependent on the person that is looking to purchase the home. The agent can represent both parties. 
representing both parties, you can't disclose to the other party the number they'd be willing to take or they would. It's just an interesting kind of perspective. Like you can still tell the buyer like, hey, it's normal to ask for these repairs. Like this is the value you got for the home. You can't disclose what the other is thinking, but you can still give them quality service for what is expected in typical transactions. So it's a little tricky for the agent to know how much to disclose or how much of a hint you can give them. It sounds like you're kind of walking a fine line there. You are walking a fine line, but uh, it happens a lot. So it may not be particularly advantageous, although I'm sure there are exceptions. It just really depends. So let's go to our favorite part of the show, especially now that you have a new fur baby, the fur babies at home. So as a reminder, I have three dogs, all very different and a grand dog who doesn't live with me, but I watch him quite a bit. And David has a cat named Marley Bailey, his longtime companion, the little chihuahua mix. I always forget what else he's mixed with. And now... Oh, I forgot about Jazz, his girlfriend's dog, a German Shepherd. And now, believe it or not, he's brought a new baby into the household. Yeah, I think the hardest part has been really figuring out a name for him. It's just such an interesting personality. We're almost considering calling him Dennis today because he's just been such a menace. (laughs) Um, We don't know if we want that to stick or not. He's amazing. He's just chewing on everything and all the light sockets and cords like it's he's not very smart in that in that sense but I think well he's, he's just a baby out. he doesn't know <laughs> yeah he doesn't know he doesn't know anything but he's fun but he does stay consistent at one thing where he does whine all the time so oh. if you're not giving him attention he just whines oh. do you have to sleep with him to keep him from whining no we've been crate training him He'll whine for a half hour or so, and he just kind of goes to sleep. Back. He tires himself out. He can get very annoying during the day when you're trying to accomplish anything. And he's just... <laughs> kinda, you got the whining in the background. Right, right. Yeah, Aww. we've learned if you have to do anything important, you have to play with him for like a half hour. Oh, where am I? And then, he'll, out, and then mm-hmm. he'll, he'll just sleep. So. Oh, Well, and uh, you said the other animals in the household were a little annoyed with him, too. Has that kind of calmed down a little bit? Yeah, they've gone along a lot better now. They've all kind of adjusted to it and all appreciate it. But as long as they have their own space, too. You have to wonder what's going through their little minds like, oh, my God, he's staying. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Yeah, they've all adjusted nicely. But again, they're all like, oh, just get out of my space. You're just so mm-hmm. annoying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how just cute. being a puppy. Yeah. Well, you're going to have a pack to walk with. That'll be like the dog whisper. I know, quite the pack. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really nice. Well, I can't wait to hear about his adventures as he grows older. Because he's so young, you probably aren't taking him out and about yet. Is that what you're doing, David? I know there's parvo worries and things like that. You haven't been able to take him to the beach or anything yet, have you? We actually took him on the beach once, and we've been carrying him in our arms when we go out, too. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we will have lots to tell us on the hop. Yes, of course. <laughs> How are all your pups doing, Patty? Everybody's doing well. Yeah. Just uh, really loving having a fenced backyard. It just makes life so easier when you have multiple dogs. And especially my eldest, it's a little sad because Buddy is 20 years old and he's blind and, you know, he doesn't walk very well and he's become incontinent. And so it's that fine line is his quality of life worth keeping him alive at this point. And I'm always asking myself that because you don't want to be selfish. If it's time for him to go, you want to let him go. But he still does eat his food very well. And he does spend time out in the backyard. He seems to like him to sun himself. And so I think as long as he doesn't seem to be miserable, he is very confused. He'll get himself stuck. I think like people, they get dementia. So sometimes he's stuck under a chair. He gets himself in the worst predicament. He'll get a cord wrapped around him. So he's really, (laughs) yeah, it's just you have to kind of keep an eye on the poor guy. 
And he was such a fast little guy. We used to call him Buddy Rocket. He used to love to go to the beach and chase the birds. And so just like people, he's just a kind of a tottering old man now. But I think I'll know when it's time for him to go if he needs assistance because he'll stop eating and he'll just be miserable. I think he's eating. Um, He still can kind of yelp for my attention. So I think he's still here. I can't believe he's here for another Christmas. It's kind of amazing. It's always tough, that's for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, David. We've got all ends of the spectrum with our animals. I know. We really do. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you have a great week. All right. You too, Patty. Let's go to go next week. Bye-bye now. Bye.